Today, I thought we'd take a look at the highest and lowest rated hack the box machines and hopefully learn some tricks along the way. As someone who regularly builds CTF like content, it should give some interesting insights and I'm going to attempt to solve both machines. So if you're just starting your hack the box journey, then hopefully you'll also gain some useful insights. Do you worry about privileged access sprawl in your organization? Uncontrolled privileged accounts are a prime target for attackers. A single compromised accounts can grant access to your entire network and that's why at TCM we trust Keeper. Keeper's Zero Trust Privileged Access Management brings together password, passkey, secrets and connections management into one single control plane for effortless security and usability. Unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper PAM is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless and has no implementation fees. So if you're looking for a new solution to secure every user and every device, check out keeper.io forward slash TCM to schedule a quick demo with their awesome team. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. All right, so here we are and I've just logged in. So let's see whether we can find what is the lowest and the highest rated machines. And I'm going to take a guess that the highest rated might be by somebody like Mr. Reboot. His machines are always really good, but let's take a look. And I really hope that it's not like rope two or something because I've got no chance of solving that box. So we'll come into I think retired. Do we have to do retired? How do we filter? So sort by here we are and then sort by rating and looks like we have a few actually. So it looks like actually this is quite surprising. All of these have a rating of five stars, 5.0. And there are a couple of insane machines in this list. Well, that's just thrown my plan completely out the window. I thought there would be one single box that had higher than everything else. So let's go with the top one because it's not an insane machine and I've not done it before. So let's take this one as our first box. So let's take a quick look and we always want to be in adventure mode and the machine info. So the release date is August 23rd, 2021. And who are the authors? Ah, created by Ipsec. So it's probably going to be a good machine. So this is the first one I think we'll try. And then let's see what the lowest rated box is. And I reckon it's going to be Sunday. Oh, it's called Rainy Day and it's rated hard. OK, so this is going to take a little while to get through, but we'll give it a go nonetheless. And you can see our servmon is there as well, which I solved this machine, I think, back in 2020, which I'm not sure it deserves to be like the second worst machine but it wasn't great either crafty was okay gosh some of these ratings are really really mean our uh, luan was a terrible box all right so we've got our two machines so we've got go box by ipsec and who built this one infosec jack i recognize this name but i don't know, actually know who this is so um hopefully it should be good all right i'm gonna get on with these machines and then i'll be back here once i've got a foothold so first up, what I did is we had a look at the targets and I did gave it a scan with nmap, so cat scan dot. My results are here and you can see we've got a bunch of ports open and, and generally speaking, if we have 80 or 8080 open, we'll take a look at those first. And here we just have this page. So I poked around here for a little bit and did a dirt search on it, or you can use GoBuster or FFUF or whatever tool that you want to use. And then also we have 8080 as well. So here we've got a sign in page and I tested this for a little while and also the forgot password as well. And this is where we got our first hint at something that might be wrong. So here I fuzzed this endpoint and here you can see what I did later on. And when you send a curly brace, and I think this was my payload like this, which was in one of my word lists, I got bad gateways. So I thought, ah, maybe we need to test for template injection. And then later on, having a look at hack tricks and some other stuff, stuff, we found that we could indeed get this template injection working. So here you can see that we also found the X forwarded server was Golang. And
and also the box is called GoBox. So I was pretty sure that this was the path. And if you want to know, so whenever I send a payload, it automatically skips down to the bottom here. This is a tip that it picked up from Tiberius. So if you enter some text that you want to scroll to, but if you come in here and auto scroll to the matched change, then it will automatically zoom to that part of the request. So you don't have to keep scrolling down and searching for stuff. And then a little while later, we found this debug command. So if we do debug CMD and do something like who am I? You can see that we have code execution and probably here I was like, ah, we're probably not roots. We probably have some stuff still to do. So I thought maybe we're in a container or something like this. And then after a little while, we figure out that the host name is AWS and this is the next big hints. And of course we can check to see whether like the AWS CLI is installed. So if we do which AWS, we can see it here. And then after that, uh, it took me a little bit of time to remember how to use the CLI, where the credentials are. So they're by default in .aws slash credentials and find that information and then figure out where we could write a web shell. So just to demonstrate the credentials, I think were in uh, stash AWS credentials like this. And then I used this. So I just came back to my terminal. And now if you like cat.aws, you can see that I have these credentials installed and we can now interact with the endpoint directly from our PC rather than from the web shell. So HTTP colon slash slash. And then if I remember the IP of the box like this and then 4566 and I have it written here in my notes. So I think it's just S3 LS for example. And you can see here that for example, we have websites so after that, and a lot of messing around and trying to figure things out, we managed to get a web shell on the box by just echoing this base64 and then decoding it to uh, temp slash rev.php and then using a similar command to move it so that it was on the website. So from temp slash rev.php to S3 website rev.php. And of course we had to do this using the AWS CLI. So we had to write the file to the machine first and then use the CLI to move it. And once we get that, we come to here and here you can see we have the host name and getting a shell from here is obviously fairly trivial. And I think if I recall, we can get the user flag. So if we cat, uh, what user was it again? I think it was Ubuntu user.txt, we can get the flag. So all in all, quite a lot of steps to get the user flag. And then of course we need to go in and start doing our privilege escalation, make sure that we've got a stable shell, start looking at the environment and searching for other stuff too. So still a lot of work to do, but pretty nice so far. I think the main things that made this box really good, are it's not just a one trick to find something, you actually have to string things together. And so of course we had to find the template injection, then we we had to find that we had control of the AWS CLI and then we had to find a way to to use the template injection to get a file to the web server and then use the AWS CLI to then move that file to the S3 bucket and then trigger that as our way in. So a really nice interesting pathway into a box and that's probably one of the reasons that it's rated so highly. Let's take a look at the low rated box now. So first, what happened is we landed on this site after scanning the box. We see that we get this web application. And of course, we ran Dirt Search or GoBuster, FFUF, tried to discover what was running. And then you can see that we have like this container name called Secrets and we have this Alpine uh, Python latest. And of course, this looks like our targets, or at least for the time being. And then there's a, a login service and Oops, here we are, there's a login. And also we could try to sign up, but it gave us sign up disab disabled. And I spent a little bit of time on these endpoints, just making sure that there wasn't something vulnerable, like a like injection on the login form or the sign up or some kind of bypass that we could do. And of course we do have a username Jack as well. So I kicked off a little bit of simple brute forcing to see whether we could get into the application, but unfortunately not. However, Dersearch did come back with slash API and I think this is the 
main thing that we want to look at. And here we have some endpoints. So slash API, slash API list, slash API health check, which we couldn't get to. So it's only available internally, which made me think, hey, maybe there's server-side request forgery or something like that, that we can use to get to it. And then of course there's API slash user and then the ID. Now, after a little while, I fuzzed all of these endpoints. So I poked at them manually for a little bit first. And then we find that actually when we go to like slash one or slash two or slash three, we don't get any meaningful results. But if we do 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, this one didn't return anything. We actually get some information back. And I thought about this for a little while. And I think that I need to go in and have a look at the code and see what's actually happening. But there's probably two things that could be happening here. One is the, this is a type juggling or like a, a type error or, or some kind of issue because we're passing uh, 2.0 when maybe it's expecting an integer. Not sure why that would return some data. And the other one is that it could be causing some sort of error or the branch of code could be bypassing, let's say like a uh, authorization check or something like that. So this is definitely something like, this took me a long time to find and is definitely something curious. So I'll be interested to see what's actually happening uh, behind the scenes. And here you can see that I've left this going for quite a while now and uh, we get this rubber ducky. And so let's try and log into the application. And this is basically where I'm up to at time of recording. Whoops. So we come in here and I'm not sure which user it is because I just took the hashes rather than the full thing. So we have Roots, Gary and Jack. So let's try Jack first. All right. And we're in as Gary, I think. So nice. So that's as far as I've gotten in a couple of hours. And I was hoping to actually get a least a user level shell, but I can see that this could be quite a frustrating box, I think. And given that, for example, something like this is quite unexpected where, yeah, okay, you might try and fuzz an endpoint and it throws an error or you get something back from it, but it to return actual information like this, given that we haven't given a clear ID is a bit unusual. And I suspect a lot of people probably got stuck here. And this might be one of the reasons why it didn't get rated quite as well as the other boxes. So let's have a look at the final comparison and have a think about some of the insights that we've picked up or gleaned today. So I didn't quite make it as far as I'd have liked for this video, but I'll definitely be revisiting both boxes probably over the weekend if I have some spare time. But so far, I really feel like Rainy Day doesn't quite deserve the low rating it has, but maybe there are some more complications to come. And if you want to see a full deep dive, then let me know down in the comments below. I do think that with GoBox from what we saw so far, having to chain together different exploits and tools to ultimately gain access where no individual piece of the puzzle is too difficult is definitely satisfying. And so, yeah, I think that this high rating is definitely deserved and has given me a few ideas for my future projects too. If we take a look at each machine matrix and compare them, then we can see that this trend where boxes that are frustrating or considered unrealistic get tagged as CTF. And we see that custom is quite highly rated here too. So when you're looking for a machine to challenge yourself, this can help give you some insight into what to expect. I think that it's natural for harder boxes to feel a little bit more CTFE because of course, advanced attacks tend to be more complex edge cases rather than just common CVEs or exploits, but often they are realistic just not that common, if that makes sense. If you have a box that you particularly like or hate, then once again, let us know down in the comments below and maybe we'll end up struggling through it on live stream sometime. And that's it for this video and I'll catch you next time.